Today, we're doing an air tightness test on a double story passive house. And the builder has paid careful attention and has managed to pass the first time. So Sarah, this has been a long time coming. It has. You're an architect mm -hmm. and uh, you went through a lot of different ideas on how this was actually going to pan out and what, what you were going to actually do. Absolutely, yeah. So I was about 2011, I went to Austria and I learned about Passive House Standard and then sort of brought that into the way I was thinking about homes in Australia and the work I do here. Yeah. But it was a couple of years ago, my husband and I decided to build a new home and we were like, what do we do? So we looked at building a seven star standard home, it was going to be a prefab home. And we actually worked with you, we were trying to get it to be as efficient as possible in terms of the detailing, in terms of how we were thinking about ventilation and how we we're getting access for the sun into the house. Mm -hmm. And we reached a point with that design and we went, no, nah, this is not going to work. Yep. It was the worst fear I had that I'd be living in a home and it would just wouldn't feel comfortable. Yep. And so I knew I just had to build it to passive house standard. And so we approached Live Green Homes and we knew they could build it to the standard we needed. Yeah. And then we started design on this place here, Torquay Passive House. I've never seen such amazing quality with the work that's been done here. Wow, I mean, we got usually, that on camera. <laughs> yeah, usually when I um, come out to these jobs, you know, I'm looking at wrap and I always find at least three or four things that I see could be a potential issue. And then, you know, we sort of deal with it as we go through the blow it or test. But I've walked onto this one and I haven't found really any issues. Everything's pretty much been mitigated uh, yeah. before I even get here. Absolutely. And that's thanks to the great team, like the attention to detail in this project. We also decided to keep it really simple in terms of the detailing. Yep. So you'll see a lot of the detailing we've chosen here, the 140 mil stud frame walls with a simple service cavity inside, ventilator cavity outside. The ventilator cavity goes all the way up to the roof. Yep. And then we've also got under here um, a cool slab detail, which you don't see very often. So instead of putting insulation under the slab we've put 50 mil battens and then insulation on top so you've just isolated that thermal mass yeah, yeah. that's right yeah. Thermal mass can actually be quite dangerous as well, especially in a passive Whoa, house. Oh, <laughs> you can't say that too loud in Australia. We love thermal mass here, but actually yeah. the passive house principles build it light and tight. Yeah. And yeah. you'll be right. So yeah. the thermal mass in Australia can work against you in the passive house context because it's too tight. But I mean, the thing is, is that, you know, you go to Europe where everything is pretty much concrete, bricks, just thermal mass everywhere, yeah. you turn on an air conditioner, you really only get comfort out of that when it's running, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> right? Because there's just so much thermal mass is just gobbling up that energy. So when you do build everything tight and light, as soon as you turn on that split system, you get, it's it's pretty much just instant and that energy, you, you enjoy it straight away. There's no thermal mass there trying to suck it in in order to sort of stabilize it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. that's what we wanted to do with this house was use that kind of simple Australian construction techniques. Yeah. It's just concrete slab on ground. Yeah. It's just timber stud walls. Yep. And same with simple kind of roof rafter construction. Yep. And then from there, we're just making those details that little bit extra to meet the passive house standard. Yeah. But also these are details that can be applied to any construction yeah. site in yeah. Australia. We've yeah. got California junctions here in the corners. We've just got really good continuous insulation yeah. and a great job with the wraps. Yeah. That can be yeah. applied to any site. Yeah, totally. And I mean, everything's mechanically fixed here today for the testing in negative pressure. We like to see these services cavity is in place and, and yeah, all of your refrigi pipes and cables meticulously sealed uh, through your wrap. This is, this has just come up perfectly. Now, um, you've also had to get windows as well. Whereabouts are those That's from? Right. These are a critical part of air tightness of any so passive house. we've gone with UPVC windows from Project Windows in Ballarat. Yeah. Local, Australian made, like Australian put together using yeah. the German um, Aeroplast frames. Wow. And they've come up really well. We're wow. very happy with how it's come together. Viridian glass, Australian mm -hmm. glass. So great to use local manufacturers. From Ballarat, huh? Yep. Amazing. They've done a really great seal here detail that you can yep. notice here. Yeah, yep. that makes a, a big difference. Yeah. Well, they haven't compromised the level of air tightness, which we're basically sitting at around about 0.4. Yep. Um, really happy with which that. Is, which is awesome, especially the first time. No need for any troubleshooting. Mm -hmm. This is the this is a dream. Yeah, that's <laughs> rare, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, no troubleshooting needed. So, I mean, one thing that I've noticed about passive house projects is that 
and, and when you compare it to something like just a conventionally constructed home in Australia is that you've got that HRV and we always like to think about ventilating first and then building airtight. In this case, you've, you know, you've, you've got to do both because it's passive house. Mm. But what really worries me is in conventional homes, in bedrooms when we're sleeping, you know, we can get CO2 parts per million around about 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 parts per million. It's, yeah. it's very common. And that was the first time I experienced Passive House in Vienna. Mm. I stayed in a student accommodation. And when I was in that space, yeah. it just felt different. And I wasn't quite sure at the time what that was. Yeah. But looking back now, just having that level of ventilation consistently going through the building, as well as the level of air tightness and the Passive House standard meant that it was a really comfortable space to be in. Yep. And that air quality was mm. one of the key things that you notice. Yep. So in so many Australian homes, we've got that build up overnight. And unless you have that consistent ventilation or some way to bring ventilation in, you're not yep. going to lower those CO2 levels yep. until you're opening windows in the morning. Yep. And actually not many Australians open windows in the morning. That's true. Yeah. It's, it's cultural. Yes, we it is. We don't really mm. operate windows. I mean, sometimes, especially those, uh, the, the traditional awning with a little windy, no one can be bothered and usually they're locked anyway. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Which is a nightmare. But again, you're still not guaranteed to get airflow that you need to keep CO2 with just one window open as well. Exactly. And for Australians, relying on those drafty homes to like yeah. get the airflow is not a solution. Nah. You can't rely on the airflow coming in from your wall cavities, who knows what's going on in there, to be enough to actually give you healthy air inside your home. Yep. So that's exactly and, what we and wanted. And if there's ever a part of our building envelopes that we want to leak, it's a window. Because if you do get mould or anything growing around that, at least you can manage it and clean yeah. it. Yeah. Whereas you can't in your wall cavities. Yeah, I'm sure you've seen a few of those. <laughs> yeah, we have. <laughs> Okay, so we're here now with Jack from Live Green Homes, the builder of this amazing home. Jack, can you talk to these starter strips? I've seen these throughout the job, which is pretty cool. I know that this stuff is UV stabilized, so it could be around the construction very early on. Can you talk around um, it? Yeah, so this is where we implement our air tightness layer from the early stages, right from our frame. So we have Proclimber product. The Extra sauna wrap is actually UV stabilized, yeah. 180 days. When we start our frame, we get our external walls up and we put a starter strip here to transfer behind all our internal walls. Ooh. So then when we come to do our internal wrap with the Intello product, yeah. Proclimber again, full system or yeah. Proclimber, we just run a strip of tape either side and that gives a continuous sealed barrier. The UV stability is great yes. because that means that we have time to transfer from frame into air tightness yeah. layer. And um, we also run that strip to transfer from our ground floor up into our first floor. So as you can oh, see along here on the detail, the yes. we go from internal out around the outside of the posies and then back in here. So we've got a continuous airtight layer yep. from slab all the way up over to slab on the other side. And then our external wraps actually mirror that and we have a ventilation detail in our ridge. But it's all pro climber systems from top to bottom, great systems. Straight off the bat, it just goes to show how much forward thinking you need to put in place, isn't it? You yeah, know, the, it's we, definitely a process um, and the whole team has to be on board. Yes. So from the minute we scratch the dirt here on yeah, site, yeah. the whole team collaborates, we make plans and future proofing, yeah. understanding everything. And yeah. you're always working today for tomorrow. It's great to be able to be a part of the process when everyone's on the same page and working together, you get results like today with the 0.4. It's really exciting, but it's definitely a process from the start. I mean, the mind boggles how many times potentially you guys would have interacted just thinking about something that was about to happen on site and you sort of had to stop and think about and col collaborate with the other guys to just, yeah, try and mitigate risk as you were going through this construction. Yeah, that's that's pretty much me. That's my job. So <laughs> find a problem and then I have to solve it myself as well. It's great being part of the journey to build a home like this. It's yep. so rewarding as a tradesperson, like for a client, it's their dream, it's their vision, but sure. to be able to bring that back to life with what we can achieve on site mm. and then setting up plans and so having such a process, mm. but then to be able to see it and we have today, we do the blower door and we see, mm. yes, our process is, we have done it right and sure. everything we've set up so far has yeah. been executed. Yeah. I think that's the beauty of building. You're always trying to find a better case scenario. You can't sit still. There's always a better way to do something or a more efficient way to do something, more sustainable product we can be using. Or even an Australian made product. That yeah, you can exactly too. right. Um, yeah, carbon footprint's a big thing that people get into as well now. So there's, there's so many things to consider. Now, one thing that uh, definitely comes into play for passive houses is negotiating the building envelope and making it work with your HRV. Let's have a look at some of these details that you picked up to do with that. It was really good, this job in particular. We had a 
pre-drawn duct pathway for our HRV. Yep. So we had some height restriction here on site that we didn't want to suspend our ceiling and run our HRV ducts in between truss and ceiling batten. Yep. So we've gone for a transfer pathway where we've actually recessed up into the truss itself. So our HRV ducting is actually running at bottom cord height. So once we frame that out, we've had to make a continuous R6 thermal envelope around that. So a little bit of insulation work there to make sure that's all correct. Yep. And we ran our airtight layer up and in over that cavity. Yeah. And then we've been able to transfer from downstairs at a HRV unit up across the ceiling. And then we've split away into bulkheads along this side. Having these details drawn from the start is critical. And this is where Passive House, part of that process of conversation we have. Yeah. But the team's nailed this one from the start yeah. in the office, got the plans right, and it's been super smooth on site. And then like that reflects into the results today. Because, I mean, one thing that we do here in Australia is we put all of our ducting, whether it be for ducted heating or cooling, right, up in the roof where it's, you know, exposed to balmy hot weather or really cold weather. Everything has to be insulated sealed up but it goes through the building envelope out of the building envelope so any leaks attributed where there's going to be high pressures in that duct it's going to be leaking outside of the building envelope too everything here for ventilation they're much smaller ducts they're all inside and encompassed inside we want to run all our services inside of that thermal envelope and then because we're passive here we have the intello wrap as well but regardless you want to be running inside of your thermal envelope yeah. to maintain stability running everything inside of the thermal envelope here all our hot water comes from the system, supplied straight into the house, all our hot water's inside. Cool. So it maintains a higher efficiency, yeah. less strain on the systems we use, more efficient and healthier too, because we have continuous insulation lanes. We yeah. don't have our ducted heating, ripping out a whole insulation vat <laughs> and putting a hole in it. We've yeah. got continuous insulation layer yeah, all, around. all the yeah. way around yeah. and that 24 seven circulation of the HRV. I mean, this is night and day compared to the common construction here in Australia, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's, um, no it's quite, a, quite a journey, quite a different yeah. process, but yeah. once you've experienced it, it's hard to understand how we don't do this as more of a standard. Sure. It's definitely, there's like budgets and considerations yeah. and things like that, but it's more than just saying it's passive, it's an investment in your own health for yeah. long term. It's definitely something that's broadened my horizons a lot when I first got into passive construction yeah, yeah. a couple of years ago. Certainly learned a lot on the journey. Yeah, I mean, this will basically be an heirloom as well. Longevity-wise, this is going to perform amazingly compared to other construction. Um, yeah, this one should be here for a very, mm. very long period of time. Right. Um, and just the stability as well with the exposure of temperature internally, we're going to be pretty stable, running between 18 and 24 all year round. Yeah. The deterioration of products inside your home should be a lot less as well because they're not exposed to high temperature changes, spikes through the seasons, yeah. plaster cracking should be a lot less, you haven't yeah. got all the movement, all the temperature changes, everything like that. So yeah. it should, the longevity of the home overall should be improved as well.